coming up next here. We hope to have a good one as well. Louisville and NC State, Montrez Harrell, hoping to protect the rim for the Cardinals. That's coming up next. Coming up next here on ESPN, NC State in Louisville. They'll tip in about 17 minutes time. So a little ACC hoops for you, Adam. Dick, take it away. How about Louisville at home against NC State? To protect the home court there and get another win. Ninth ranked in the country already, 8-3 and three in conference play. So uh, a tough, scrappy NC State team, though. Uh, they'll have to get through here coming up next on ESPN. Got a few seconds here. What do you expect to see and hope to see from Louisville if you're a fan? Well, for Louisville, you want to see Chris Jones get back on track. When they win their game the other night, he gets benched during their big run. Quentin Snyder played some excellent minutes, but they got to have some other guys score uh, besides Harrell, Jones, and Rozier. All right, Louisville and NC State coming your way. Miles and I will see you in the Mazda Halftime Report coming up in a bit. But until then, enjoy the first half, everyone. Welcome to Saturday Showcase, presented by Five Hour Energy. It's a little chilly on the outside, but more on the inside. We welcome you to the ACC on ESPN in downtown Louisville, the site of the beautiful KFC Yum Center. For the NC State Wolfpack kicking on the ninth-ranked Louisville Cardinals. Hello again, everybody, along with Kara Lawson. I'm Dave Lamont. We both wish you a very happy Valentine's Day. And today, not only are we celebrating love, we're celebrating our love of the dunk. And in Montrez Harrell, you've got one of the nation's most spectacular players, also a good, solid, all-around player, as well as just a great dunker. He is. He's the biggest mismatch in this game. Both teams have outstanding parameters, but Louisville has a game-changer in Montrez Harrell at the power forward position. And we've seen his dunks all season long, the most dunks in Louisville history. This was an unbelievable alley-oop dunk there against North Carolina. He brings great energy, great action to the floor for Rick For NC State, they're a team that's sort of hovering around that bubble. They're not even on it, but a win here today would help, and they may turn to Trevor Lacey for that. They're running out of chances. They're running out of chances for big-time wins. They upset Duke at home. They need a quality win on the road. Today, it could be it, and they're led by Trevor Lacey. He's been very consistent this season as a scorer for Mark Godfrey's team. He's going to have to do that and take care of the basketball against this Louisville pressure. And let's take a look at the lineup for Mark Godfrey's NC State Wolfpack coming in here. 14 and 11 and 5 and 7 in the ACC and they've got some you know we got dunkers we got shot blockers in this game this Malika Boo is a great one also we now see Leonard Freeman has been added to the starting lineup replacing Kyle Washington that is a late change for Mark Gottfried otherwise the lineup is the same and for Louisville and for their fans the return of Wayne Blackshear to the lineup is critical for Rick Pitino he only played about a minute and 10 seconds the other night in the win over Pitt after suffering a hip pointer he has returned otherwise it's the usual group for the Cardinals and there is Trevor Lacey out of Huntsville, Alabama, Plate began his career with the Crimson Tide. You know, leads the nation in isolation points, so he does a lot on his own to be able to free himself for open shots in the half court, and NC State relies on him late to create good shots for himself. There's Montrez Harrell, the all-time leading dunker at a school that has had their share of great dunkers. Terry Rozier, candidate for the ACC Player of the Year. Our officials today, Roger Ayers is a man with a ball. He's joined by Bill Covington Jr. and Terry Weimer. Let's do this. And stealing it is Jones. And Rozier thought about the three. Here, what does the return of Blackshear mean for Louisville? Yeah, he gives them a, a physical presence, and, and rebounding is, is huge for, for what Louisville needs to do, specifically in this game, is handle the glass, and so Wayne Blackshear gives them that element on, on the perimeter. Harrell, with the shot clock into single digits, loses it. Well, that was a concern for Mark Gottfried. Spoke to him before the game, and he is very worried about second shot opportunities. And Rick Pitino on the other side said, you know what, the having Blackshear back gives me more weak side rebound. So we'll see how that plays out. That's Lacey there over to Ralston Turner. Cat Barber, another very important player for NC State. 
Louisville, an excellent defensive team. You'll see a lot of this deep in the shot clock. Lacey, a very tricky shot. And Harold gets the rebound and leads the break. Blackshear couldn't hang on to the hustle there by Anuaku. But it is still Louisville ball. Blackshear off the screen for three. Well, I'd say that hit pointer is feeling just fine. Wayne Blackshear limited to just one minute against their win in their win over Pittsburgh on Wednesday because ran into Mango Mathiang at their shoot around earlier that day and just wasn't able to go. So it's a great sign for Rick Pitino that not only can he go, but that he's able to give them some offensive production. Barber off the screen, ties it up. It's a 38% three-point shooter. Contact there off the Herald screen, but no call. Well, these are two of the more explosive point guards in the ACC, and Jones and Barber, so it's going to be a great matchup on this end of the floor. Nice touch pass for Harrell, and Onuaku blows the bunny. That's two assists Harrell could have had if the shots had gone down. Lacey trying to find a gap in that Louisville defense. It's never easy to do. Barber, foul line, Jay. Air ball put back and good. And NC State takes the lead. They're going to need some production from their bigs, from their front court today, NC State. So Freeman, he's a player that, that you mentioned, Dave. He gets kind of the surprise start, but he, he's going to be checking Harrell some, and his physicality, they hope, can, can help keep him away from the basket. He's a freshman from D.C., where they have a lot of great basketball talent. And Harrell gets the rebound. Freeman is actually the Wolfpack's leading rebounder per game, and only 19 years old. That's a two ball off balance, but it doesn't seem to bother Rozier. He is so crafty with the basketball. His change of speed in the half court, his ability to just stop and rise and fire is special. I mean, he's averaging 18 and a half in a game this year, and he's been getting everybody's best. Well, we always talk about built for March, and this is a Louisville team with a backcourt that is absolutely built for the tournament. Nice move there by Abu. And they don't come out of the game that often either, Jones or Rozier. Almost thrown away. Was it touched? Yes. It was deflected into the belong to Louisville when we return. Wayne Blackshear getting it going early here for the Louisville Card Cardinals. It's a great sign, and Montrez Harrell, also a big part of it. Those two playing exceptionally well. Onowaku blows the bunny there. You got to finish that, but Louisville, they're on top early. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots and in part by BMW. We only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. our score in time NC State up early here in Louisville on your Saturday showcase we got big Monday presented by Verizon coming up at 7 o'clock Michael Young leads the Pitt Panthers against Malcolm Brogdon and the Virginia Cavaliers and a big win for Pitt today taking down North Carolina following that the Jayhawks who win today battle of Mountaineers number two Virginia hosting Pitt number eight Kansas number 21 West Virginia at nine Monday on ESPN it's all part of rivalry week presented by Wendy's Pitt had a loss in this building a couple of nights ago. And Louisville went on a 22 to 2 second half run to blow that game open. Pitt did have a lead as large as six. Well, Pitt's been playing well lately. Had them last Saturday against Syracuse, and the return of Cameron Wright was big for them this afternoon. They did not have his services as we see Rozier with that tough play against Louisville. He's the, one of their best perimeter defenders, and so Jamie Dixon having him back, it makes a big, big difference. You see some of that. Louisville pressure that Rick Pitino is known for. But a good job by Lacey to break it. 
And Lacey was dancing along the side baseline and stepped on it, out of bounds. There you see on the left with the hat, Russ Smith, Georgie Jang on the right. A couple of alums popping by to see how their old team is doing. We've seen a lot of that this weekend around the around the country. You guys are on the All-Star break in the NBA. Of course, Jang, a center with the Minnesota Timberwolves, and Russ Smith, a part of the Memphis Grizzlies, although he's been on the D-League shuttle back and forth this season like a lot of rookies are. Jones kicks it out, Blackshear. Two threes for Wayne Blackshear. Well, not a great three-point shooting team. We know that it's been well chronicled, particularly in their big games. So 30% on the season, a great sign for their offense with Blackshear with two buckets. How about the move by Cat Barber, really extending his hand with the ball to avoid the shot block. Blackshear is hit, and now he'll have a chance for the old-style three-point play. It's a little bit of back, back and forth, and Wayne Blackshear, nice attack after a layup. I mean, Cap Barber kind of lingered a little bit underneath the basket after attacking the Louisville pressure, and Wayne Blackshear out in transition, finishing. But what we saw from NC State, the last offensive possession, that's how Mark Godfrey wants to play this zone. He wants to attack it. He feels like they can get some buckets on the back end, not always walk it up, but utilize transition, try to beat their pressure, and get some quality looks on the backside. Nine for Blackshear already. Averages just a little under 11 a game. There's the attack. Barber lost the handle, but was knocked out of bounds. So with 16 to shoot, it'll be Wolfpack ball. Well, there's a reason why Anthony Barber's nickname is Cat. I mean, he is Cat quick, and he is very difficult to stay in front of. 21 points per the last three games. He's been very, very aggressive, has, has played at a really high level, and his challenge today is also on the defensive end, trying to keep another cat quick player in Chris Jones in front of him. Couple of subs for the Wolfpack. Desmond Lee checks in, so does number 21, BJ Anya. He's a 6'9, 300 pound sophomore, again from Washington, D.C., number 21 in black and red. Two to shoot, down to one. That'll be a shot clock violation. Little defense, tighten the screws. Yeah, you see what makes him special. I mean, deflections, active hands, and how quick they close down gaps. That was terrific help by Terry Rozier, helping on on uh, Freeman as he started to try and drive there. That was a great job of digging down. Louisville's guards will dig down and dig the basketball out in the half court defensively. Well, the Wolfpack have sub. No changes for Louisville. Rozier missing inside. Rebound to Anya. There's the attacking you're talking about. It led to a shot that didn't go in, but that's a good example of the approach you just mentioned. Jones will pull up. First points for Jones on the afternoon. Barber almost got it picked. Now lost it, Jones to the floor. He wants a timeout and he'll get it. Saved by the timeout is Cat Barber. So you're right, he's got quick feet and apparently quick hands and a quick mind to get the timeout. Louisville now in front, 15-9 over NC State and beginning to tighten the defense that they are known for. On a day that we celebrate love, we also pay homage to maybe the most exciting shot in the game, the dunk. 70 years ago, Bob Curland of Oklahoma A&M, now we know as Oklahoma State. Bob is considered to be the first player to dunk in a college game. And as the day unfolds, we will continue to celebrate the great dunk artists. And one of them is going to join us here in any second now. We just saw his face. Commemorating the banner here at the KFC Yum Center. That would be the man we call Dr. Duncanstein. Seven to shoot. Barber. Four to shoot. Turner into the paint. Pulls up. It's an important jump shot for the Wolfpack. Yeah, I love that attack from Turner. You know, Turner has not shot the basketball well, and I think he can do more of that. Get into the lane, get to the free throw line, and utilize the size that he has. So that's a good sign for NC State that Ralston Turner is not just settling for those three-point shots. 
Cardinals have been shooting it very well. They've been five of the last six. No double team. Now he runs into it. Harold got a little too clever there. Blackshears did a couple of threes. That one might have been deflected, but the rebound goes to Louisville. Wide open. There it is. Ronald Lockwood didn't realize it at first. Very close to a travel. Ball rattling around by Ralston Turner. His 64th made three of the season. And if there's one thing NC State knows, it's close games. They've had a ton of them. And unfortunately for the Wolfpack, they've come on the short end of a lot of those close games. I mean, they had Virginia on the ropes. They had Notre Dame on the ropes. Wayne Blackshear seems determined to not let Louisville be on the ropes at all in this one. I mean, his attack mindset early on has been impressive. That's 11 points for him. <laughs> and it's going to be a kickball there. All right, coming up, we're going to hear from a former NBA player and a former NBA coach. They're going to start to argue about the dunk. We celebrate the excitement. Talked about celebrating the dunk. We've already had some in our game. Here's Anawaku for Louisville slamming that down. And now, let's get the opinions on this from Jalen Rose and Avery Johnson from NBA Countdown discussing NC State and Louisville dunking history. Coach, I'm rolling with NC State, David Thompson, Skywalker, urban legend. He could take a quarter off the top of the backboard and leave change. I'm going with Dr. Duncanstein, Daryl Griffin, Louisville Cardinals, 1980 champion. Skywalker. My guy won the championship, too. My guy dunked on Ralph Sampson. Touche. And here he is, a man who did indeed dunk on Ralph Sampson. Dr. Duncan Stein, Daryl Griffith, we're delighted you could join us. And you played in an era where the dunk was just coming back after it had been banned. Yes, uh, it was an exciting time for me. Uh, couldn't dunk in high school, only when we were up by 30, and uh, we got a check, and Coach Houston <laughs> took us out of the game. Uh, but when it was reinstated in college, it was like, I was like showtime. This is, you know, this is something that, that would be a real energetic part of the game and, and uplift the game. I think, you know, you look at football, you, you look at the, uh, the, the long uh, bomb pass, you look at baseball, it's the home run, and for basketball, it's the dunk. And it's an exciting part of the game. I'm glad they reinstated it. And we should mention that between 1967 and 76, players could not dunk. It was called then the Lou Alcindor rule. You know him now as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Oh, there's a solid block, so we'll try again. And NC State goes the other way. So who do you look at now as the top dunk artists around? Well, there's a lot of guys, man. The, 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 the fortunate thing about it in my era is we didn't have ESPN like, televising all the games. <laughs> so you can see everybody in the top ten plays of the week. So you get to see schools and players and high school players that you never would have able to see and exposed to when I came through. So, I mean, there's some sleepers out there. But, you know, we, we got a beast on our team with Montrez. I mean, he thinks dunk first. <laughs> He's a, he's a beast. Uh, he, he, he's dunking by any means necessary. Almost had one there on a spectacular yeah. putback, and a little wrestling match breaks out. And finally, Blackshear, who is just playing with a demonic purpose to, this afternoon, comes away with a rebound, and a foul will go against NC State. All right. How did you get the nickname? Dr. Dunkenstein was, yeah. was influenced. My brother Michael was a big Parliament Funkadelic fan. And they had a character on there. Uh, he played a character called Dr. Funkenstein. So it kind of rhymed, and we kind of got inspiration from, from, uh, from George Clinton. So that's, that's, how, that's how the brand came about. <laughs> All right, now we saw the Dr. J documentary. We know he gets up. Can you still dunk? No, no. The, war <laughs> the, the, the warranty on my legs has expired. <laughs> And for all we know, that could have been special effects. You never know these days with movies, but Gill on the drive and short rebound underneath. Darrell, before we let you go, Louisville sitting here with 20 wins, number nine in the country. What do you think this team's chances are come March? 
I, I think our chances are good, especially when you're playing in a good ACC conference. The competition level prepares you for, uh, for tournament play. I mean, I was ecstatic when I heard Louisville was going to the ACC because and I, I was the type of players. I didn't like blowout games. I didn't like Coach Trump to schedule them. I wish we could have played a top five team every every week, and the fans really enjoy it. So I think any any school to come out of the ACC is always going to be prepared and got a shot at it because of the caliber of the conference. But I, I like our guys. I think they'll gel at the right time. And Blackshear, he continues to play the way he's been playing. Uh, he'll be a big lift for us. Yeah, Daryl, thank you so much for dropping by. We know almost a dunk there. We've had a lot of close calls, and Harold looks like he's going to be called with the foul. You are number three on the all-time list here. Montrez Harrell is number one at 192 and holding. But we really appreciate your time and really appreciate the entertainment that we provided. Wes Unsell, the guy on the left, he couldn't get up, but we know that you could, and so could Purvis Allison. And I say that as a fan of Wes Unsell, because you'd also take you an hour and a half to get around to Wes Unsell's screen. Uh, Wes was a beast. <laughs> yes, he I mean, was. <laughs> he's one of the best that ever did it, man. I mean, he was a monster. He was an inspiration to me when I was coming up watching Louisville play. I used to watch the Wes Unsell, the Junior Brisbane, the Bill Price, and, and uh, Butch Beard, them guys. They, they inspired me to want to go to Louisville. So do you remember that was it the dirt bowl that you got started at the dirt bowl that's that the dirt bowl was like the Rutgers in New York for us here in Louisville I mean we would have six seven thousand uh, uh, fans the Sunday uh, the college players could play the pro players were in town we had a Kentucky Colonels and some of the Pacers would come yeah. down so it was it was a very uh, intense and highly uh, competitive uh, uh, summer league and intense and highly competitive is this game as well Daryl again thank you so much thank you so much honored to have you here we no really problem. really appreciate Dr. Duncanstein on the day we celebrate the dunk one of the best ever at it joining us here. Louisville leading by four. Both offenses, Kara, have kind of gone into a little bit of a lull. And of course, I thought that three would go in as soon as I said that. But no one's shooting all that well at the moment. NC State with another opportunity and a fresh shot clock. Look underneath, and and we have a whistle and a foul. B.J. Anya got hit. What's happened to the offenses in this game? Well, when you look at Louisville, I mean, this is what they do to, to teams on that end of the floor. I mean, they're one of the best defenses in the country. They're seventh in the nation in terms of field goal percentage defense. So it is always tough sledding to go against that defense, not just in the full court. We've talked about their about their deflections and about their steals, but also in the half court because of how athletic they are. And now you see what Louisville does in the ACC in defense. And of course, if they're not first, Virginia is. That's how the conference has gone. That's the sec secret that everybody knows about, really, with Virginia, is their great defense. And will they be able to maintain that when they get to the NCAA tournament? Well, and the big question for Virginia is will they be able to maintain that with Justin Anderson out with the injury right now? And so that, you know, that win against NC State for them was huge to not have one of their big guns available. Ooh, block shot underneath, and there will be a whistle and a foul. So never mind the block shot. Louisville's missed their last seven after starting eight of 13. Well, Virginia was having a tough time with uh, Danny Manning's Wake Forest squad today. Abu hit with that foul. Anawaku, 48% free throw shooter. And Virginia won that game by one point over Wake Forest. There's Mark Gottfried. So Anawaku is a player who, you know, is starting to assert himself a little bit on the offensive end of the floor. You're not going to get big scoring from the from the players on Louisville's roster outside of their big four. But he's learning to play off of Montrez Harrell, the double teams, the timing of when to dive to the basket. All that is very important because you can fall into some good opportunities, whether it's a put back dunk or whether it's a pass out of a double team in a layup. So I think he's starting to figure that out as a freshman where he can find ways to impact the game. And Rozier hit with a bit of a touch foul there. When we come back, we'll talk about an important and an emotional connection for Malik Abu of NC State.
Chris, thank you very much. Look forward to hearing from you and Miles at the half. There's our situation here. Louisville on top on our Saturday showcase at the KFC Yum Center downtown in a game where if NC State wants to even get close to the bubble, they have got to get this game. A huge win against the top 10 team on the road it would be for the Wolfpack. Trevor Lacey trying to play off the screen of Leonard Freeman. I don't think we've seen Kyle Washington at all. He was listed in the starting lineup for NC State, has not come off the bench. We haven't been told anything about whether he's hurting a beautiful, there you go, Cat Barber with a layup. But we haven't heard anything about Washington either being a disciplinary issue or an injury. Mark Godfrey's been content to rotate Freeman, Abu, and then we've also seen B.J. Anya, so he has some size in there with the big front line of Louisville, and maybe it's just a size thing. You know, Washington, a smaller forward, and he gets a little bit more size with those other three. Pull up short by Jones, tap, foul will go against the Cardinals, and that foul will be on Iwaku. Washington the other night against Virginia, 7.6 rebounds and three block shots and a narrow defeat for the Wolfpack. Ralston Turner will come back into the game, and Caleb Martin, one of the Martin twins, will check out. And Lacey attacking off that press. Gets the layup opportunity underneath for Freeman, and he is fouled. And that's on Iwaku. That's two on him. Now, one thing Rick Pitino does have is depth at the big man position. And here comes Anas Mahmoud, the freshman from Cairo. All seven feet, 200 pounds of it. Nice free throw there for Malik Abu. Two free throws for Malika Boo, freshman from Boston. Harold pulls up. He's got a decent shot. Couldn't get the touch that time. It seems like a long time since Louisville has scored. Five minutes. Lacey step back for the lead. Beautiful shot by the redshirt junior Trevor Lacey. Yeah, he loves that part of the floor, getting to the middle of the floor. And Trevor Lacey a lot of times will have a size advantage on his opponents, and that was just a, a really good one-on-one -on -one play. I mean, Rosier was there, but he utilizes a step back and knocks it down. Trevor Lacey hit with that foul, his first, and going to the line will be the senior Chris Jones out of Memphis. You all might have noticed that instead of the usual school colors today, these teams are wearing these gold sneakers with a little bit of black trim. Uh, and Carol, why is this? Well, it's a part of a black, the Black History Month collection, and both these schools are sponsored by Adidas, and in collaboration with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and kind of an homage to not only Black History Month, but also African-American role models like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. They put together this collection, and so in select games during this month, you will see both of these teams wearing these shoes, and they're pretty neat. They've got a couple different versions of them. I mean, John Wall's shoe, Derek Rose's shoe, and so they have a, a bunch of different, and it's a, a classy gesture there by both Adidas and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Well, I don't think that was a pass that Lacey meant, but it doesn't matter because it's a basket for the Wolfpack, and they go back in front by a point. And Abu now on a little run of his own. The give and go almost didn't work for Louisville. Here's Harrell. And now Rozier. So Louisville's lost their way offensively just a little bit. And that's no good. And there is Abu with a rebound. Playing some inspired basketball. And he's really played well as of late, as a freshman. I mean, he has some plays and some sequences that just flash on film. Oh, but Mamu with a blocked shot. Aaron into the game, 
Three ball off the front iron, no good. Rebound going out toward NC State and Ralston Turner. I tell you what, you're a lightly used sub off the bench, and you've got the crowd already chatty, chanting mood for you when you come <laughs> in the game and do something well. You're doing something right. And he shows well on that. Gets back to his man in time. That's a tough little shot. You can see Mahmoud's length bothering him a little bit. Louisville needs a bucket to get this place really ignited. Rozier will try too hard, too much of everything, but Harrell goes over the top, and he got a hit, and I think it'll be on Abu. Well, Malik Abu, we mentioned playing emotionally and Kara playing with a purpose. Just Tuesday night, his life changed in a way he never anticipated with the tragic murder of two of his friends. All three students uh, were murdered in Chapel Hill, and um, Malik Abu had a very good relationship with two of them. They were newlyweds, married in, uh, back in December, and Malik Abu was a guest at their wedding, and they shared the Muslim faith in, in common. The Muslim faith was a big reason that Malik Abu came to NC State. He visited a mosque on his recruiting trip in Raleigh and just found a great sense of community there and had made some great friends, has made great friends, and you know, very affected by it, very affected by it, as, as was the entire Triangle community when you look at it and you saw the outpouring of support, not just from the Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill areas to see the students gunned down like that. And of course, our prayers go, go out to the families and those who are affected by that. And Malik Abu has been playing some inspired basketball this week. Now, this is his second game since that. He played against Virginia and you see him there now taking a break. There was a big vigil in Raleigh and instead of wearing the green ribbon he wore his uniform that night when he attended the vigil and that shot by Barber comes up short Harold with another rebound for Louisville Louisville has missed their last 12 shots. That's seven minutes without a basket made. Now, they've made some foul shots, but, and they're only down by one. It's because of their defense, and, you know, this, this has happened throughout the season where Louisville has gone on some droughts, and they have not made their jumpers, and when they go through stretches like this, I, I think they have to remember that they have Montrez Harrell in the paint. Get him the basketball, allow him to work. Five to shoot. He'll shoot from the perimeter instead. Chips the front of the rim and a rebound. Stolen out of the hands of Shaquan Aaron and the officials thought it was a foul. And it is a foul in their minds. And we'll step away with 3.34 to go. NC State, a foul on Ralston Turner. There's Malik Abu with the Wolfpack up by one. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Proud sponsor of the 2015 John R. Wooden Men's Player of the Year Award. All right, let's get to know Trevor Lacey and Ralston Turner is brought to us by Burger King and how important it is, Kara, for these guys to play well for NC State to win. A perimeter dominated attack that NC State has, and you look at the difference, you look at the dichotomy and wins and losses. I mean, they have been terrific in wins. The proficiency, the efficiency on the offensive end, not quite there in their losses. And so that that is your key. I mean, you can limit Lacey and you can limit Turner, and you've got a great shot at beating the Wolfpack. And into the game now for the first time we've seen is Kyle Washington, number 32. He just showed defensively there, and it rolls in Show. for Chris Jones and Washington getting some playing time. That was about eight minutes, give or take a few seconds, for Louisville before they actually had a basket. I don't know what's more remarkable, the fact that they didn't score for eight minutes or the fact that they have a one-point lead right now after not scoring for eight minutes. Washington, pull up Jay, lefty shot, no good. Rebound, tapped away from Harrell, and goes into the hands of the 5'10", listed at 5'10", Chris Jones. Who just missed the tap to head to Cat Barber. Thought he might have pulled up there for a three, but held back. Now he's got the seven footer on him and passes. 
Try to break him down. Gets in between. That's going to be goaltending. What a sweet move by Barber. Got in between him and Harold. Well, we knew that was coming. I mean, anytime you get a center on you as a point guard, I mean, that's clear it out and, and let him go to work. And we talked about Barber's quickness off the dribble. I mean, he can get into the lane so easily. And that's what he's going to have to do uh, against Louisville in the half court. I mean, they are limited in terms of players they can go to for buckets. Really just Lacey and Barber in terms of shot creation in the half court. So those two are going to have to have to carry the mail there. Well, Mamu checks out. Number 12, Mango Mathiang comes in. He's only 6'10". <laughs> so the height continues for Rick Pitino. And there's a pass to him from Harrell. Shot rejected, but a foul. Freeman came through with a block. Uh, we'll see what the whistle is all about. It'll be on Malika Boo. Two on him. Super Tuesday presented by Cree LED Lighting at 7 o'clock. Number one Kentucky. Convincing winners today. Battling the upset-minded balls. And Brandon Dawson leads the Sparties against Zach Urban and the Wolverines. It's number one Kentucky. Tennessee is seven. Then Michigan State. Michigan Tuesday at ESPN. Or on ESPN. Part of Rivalry Week presented by Wendy's. Well, you couldn't have scripted it any better today for the Spartans. How about Denzel Valentine hitting the game-winning three today for Tom Izzo and Sparty? on Valentine's Day. Doesn't get any better than that. I would say guard the guy named Valentine at the end of the game. Ideally. I mean, isn't that, isn't that, shouldn't that be on the scouting report? At least for today, guard the guy named Valentine at the end. <laughs> I can't top that. We've had five <laughs> ties and eight lead changes. Under two minutes. Been a tight first half. Ooh, that was double blocked. I think two guys got a piece of that. Look at, look at Barber clap and give him Montrez Harrell a hand. He gives him a hand for that because that was a really good split by Cat Barber. And Harrell comes in at the end. I thought for a second Blackshear got a little piece of it. But it looks like Harrell got it twice. I think you only get credit for one. Seven to shoot. Step back three. Oh boy. Whoa. Goodness, Trevor Lacey. He's got five. Rozier, they want to get to Harold Posting. Blackshear has been hot from three. Continues. He's got 14. in concentration by Martin gets it off spin move good pass and an and one coming up for NC State and BJ Anya oh, the three pointers are falling we had a little bit of a scoring drought but not the last couple of possessions Trevor Lacey we talked about his ability in ISO situations leads the country in ISO points there's one right there right between the eyes and then Wayne Blackshear Says, hey, I can see you that three-pointer. I'll raise you it as well. 14 points, a really productive first half for Wayne Blackshear. And, and you know, the three-point shot for Louisville, it's been up and down all season long. But when they hit shots like this, they are tough, tough, tough to defend. Something to keep in mind, that foul on Harrell. He'll sit the remaining seconds here. Two fouls. He doesn't have a bucket. That's amazing. He had 28 the other night against Pitt with 12 rebounds and five blocks. He's taken three shots and missed them all. Good shot fake by Jones. Really smooth. Very, very well done. Shot clock is off. Under 10. Barber. Five. Martin, three. Lost it, two, one. Will it count? Doesn't matter. So at halftime, Louisville will go into the dressing room with the narrowest of leads. And look what happens in the last three years when they lead at halftime and they haven't dropped one this season. 
Well, can they maintain that pace? We'll step aside. Well, you step into the Mazda Halftime Report with Chris Cotter and Miles Simon. Men, it's all yours. Thank you, Dave. Miles Simon here with me in studio. Mazda Halftime Report. You talk about our game here with Virginia, I mean, with uh, Louisville and NC State. Louisville, they still go through those stretches where they're offensively challenged, but you found maybe a little bit of a silver lining there in the first half form. Yeah, I think somewhat of a bright spot is that Wayne Blackshear scores 14 points. He hasn't scored in double figures uh, in, in his last five games. And so finally for him to finally get off the snide, he, he came, coming off the hip pointer where he only played one minute in the last outing. Now, Harrell. Jones, Rozier, they can pick up off of where Blackshear is in, in the uh, second half. You know, it's a big game for NC State, too. Let's not forget about that because as all these teams on the bubble are trying to get on the bubble, try and position themselves, you know, for, for a spot in that tournament to get a road win at Louisville, that would be a nice feather. Yeah, a nice road win against a, a top 25 RPI team in Louisville would be big. You remember they've already upset Duke. They have another RPI top 50 win against, um, against uh, Boise State already mm -hmm. this season. And Joe Lunardi has NC State in with a win today. That's motivation enough right there. Should be a good <laughs> second half between Louisville and NC State. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Kia Motors. Visit Kia.com to learn more. Welcome back to Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. It's all part of the ACC on ESPN. Halftime just about wrapping up with the NC State Wolfpack in yet another close game, trailing the Louisville Cardinals, who all don't lose this year when they're up by halftime. They're 18 0, but it's only a one point game. Along with Kara Lawson, I'm Dave Lamont. You know, not only are we celebrating Kara's birthday, which happens to be today, we're also celebrating the dunk. And we've had Dr. Duncan sign on, Daryl Griffith. If you hope you got a chance to catch that, but Montrez Harrell is the guy we think of. And in warm ups, Oh no! However, that was great, but that was warm ups. And since the game started, Kara, it hasn't been that easy. No, 0 for 3 from the field, 0 points. So when you're not getting going on the offensive end of the floor with scoring, what do you do? You try and involve your teammates. And that's exactly what Montrez Harrell did in the first half. The principal piece to two, Wayne Blackshear, three pointers. Also was very good in the rebounding battle, had five boards in that first half, but he does need to get going on the offensive end. And we get going on the offensive end right here with NC State having the ball there in the road blacks with a red trim. Twelve lead changes in this game. Make it 13. Trevor Lacey. That was a two. For Louisville, it's Rozier and Jones. Mathiang is in the game, number 12, along with Harrell and Wayne Blackshear, who, if you're a Louisville fan, good news for you, he returned after only playing one minute the other night and scored 14 points in the first half on five of six shooting, including three threes. Rozier hit with his second foul. So NC State doing exactly what they need to in turn trying to pull off an upset. They've not turned the basketball over a ton, just three turnovers. Remember, Louisville thrives on those live ball turnovers. The other thing they've done is they've played very good defense. We came in the game talking about Louisville's defense. NC State's defense has been excellent this afternoon. That's Louisville shooting just under 36%. They had an eight-minute scoring drought, at least as far as field goals go. That's an awesome play made in transition by Blackshear. And it leads to a three. This is how quickly the game can turn with Louisville. We saw this on Wednesday night against Pitt. They closed the game on a 22-2 run. You can got to be careful here if you're NC State. Don't turn the basketball over, and that's a nice silencer there by Ralston Turner. Well, he got through two gates, and Rick Pitino calls a timeout. He got Blackshear in the air and then shot it over Harrell. That's very, very demanding, and Turner able to pull it off. On the run, the Louisville Cardinals. It's what we've seen from them all season long. Unselfish play, and Chris Jones knocking down the big three. But take a look at
look at the ACC standings as we sit here in the middle of what is now ACC country, and there's Louisville, a solid-looking tournament team, number nine in the country in eight and three, but to the right of that is NC State. Tara, they've had four losses by four or fewer points. Only Georgia Tech has had a rougher road in close games in the ACC. No, there's five absolute locks in the ACC, and those are the teams at the top of the standings. As you can see, they have the rankings beside them. And, and after that, will the ACC get a six-team in? If they do, who will it be? There, there's a bunch of teams trying to play themselves into the tournament, and NC State happens to be one of them. This game, the game at North Carolina, are the two big games on their slate, their remaining schedule, that could be difference makers for them if they win them. That is just, by the way, the second turnover for Louisville today. Now, here is what Joe Lenardi has. He's got, there's your five locks. He's got the Hurricanes as the part of that first four out group. This is brought to you, by the way, by Allstate. I look at bracketology. And Hurricanes are a very hard team to figure out. Confounding, is, aren't they? I mean, they, they have had registered some huge wins and then have had some confounding losses here in the ACC. So they're another team, Miami, Pitt, NC State, that needs to get it going. And there's Abu with a nice jump. Over Harrell. Harrell was just a little behind him. Would have been hard to, for Harrell to block that without fouling. Well, if you're a fan of both these teams, these scenarios look familiar. Louisville just Wednesday night got into a close game with Pitt until the final 10 minutes. And NC State plays nothing but close games. That basket will not count. It's a floor foul against the Wolfpack on Leonard Freeman. Now, we talked about celebrating the dunk. For the love of the dunk right here, how about for the love of the pick and roll? Nice pass and a boo with the finish. And, you know, you have a guard like Barber that can handle pick and roll and that can read coverages and get your guys in the right spots. It's a big time advantage. Harrell draws another foul. He is still in search of his first field goal. See, I like this. I like this for Montrez Harrell. Last two possessions, what do we see? Uh, he's facing up, but he's attacking off of the dribble from the elbow area. He's going towards the basket. That's what you need to do. When you haven't gotten it going yet on the offensive end of the floor, when you don't have a field goal, you need to attack, utilize your strength, and now he gets himself to the free throw. And Harrell with his first points. So now with three fouls, Leonard Freeman, who started the game today after not starting since the beginning of ACC play for NC State, he checks out of the game, and B.J. Anya, the big sophomore, will come in, number 21. So Harrell at least is in the scoring column for his first points, and here comes some Cardinals pressure. Barber directing traffic. Now he gets a good look at three, but missed. And the rebound to Blackshear. And quickly, Louisville on the run. Harrell wants the alley oop, but they couldn't pull it off. Jones will fire a three instead and missed it badly. But Jones is making Lacey work for every inch up the court. Lacey got by him, and shot is blocked by Mathang. Deflected. They were trying to set up a three for Rozier and it's knocked out of bounds. Well, Chris Jones, he just makes you work for it. I mean, look, it starts underneath the basket. I mean, this is true 94 feet right here. I mean, making him change direction multiple times. Lacey does a good job at handling it, but then he's a little bit out of control when he goes to the to the uh, basket and Matthews able to get the block. Matthews set the screen, Rozier hits the three. And the Dwayne Wade aficionado comes through and almost with a steal. Made baskets are like fuel to the fire for this Louisville team. You just see them get a little bit of a pep in their step when they get made baskets. It allows them to set up their pressure. And look at Chris Jones and Terry Rozier. I mean, they are ready to go. They're sensing some weakness in terms of being able to turn NC State over here. And they're going to try to put the full court press on. Right in front of Rick Pitino was the inbound pass. NC State and Lacey will get it across in time. The largest lead we've had in this game has been six. Harrell, look out here, into the seats. He's okay. Hopefully the spectators are too. 
Well, this is what Louisville fans have come to expect from Montrez Harrell. I mean, it's just outstanding effort right here. You know, I'm a little disappointed no one in the front row elected to take the charge there. <laughs> uh, I think they're wise. The people yeah. in Louisville know, and the whole state of Kentucky know basketball. I'm not standing there. He can. I'll be posterized by Montrez Harrell anytime. Meantime, a fantastic drive once again by Cat Barber into traffic. He's got 11. Jones draws contact. Oh, and almost in a very difficult and one. I think this will be on a boo, and it is. And that's going to put him with three fouls. This third personal foul, third team foul. Timeout on the floor. Today we are loving the dunk, and we've had a few. Some in warm-ups, some when it matters. One more on Harold, no less. Wednesday night, Journey to Eternity, presented by Sonic, continues at 9 o'clock. Marcus Page in number one North Carolina, loser today to Pitt, taking on Hula Local 4 and the fourth-ranked Blue Devils. Duke, Wednesday at 9 on ESPN against UNC, part of Rivalry Week, presented by Wendy's, and following our game, Duke and Syracuse at the Dome. Yeah, that should be a great one. Largest on-campus crowd, over 35,000 at the Carrier Dome. And Syracuse, a team with that self-imposed postseason ban. So this is their Super Bowl. I mean, this is playing in the regular season. These are the big games. So we'll see two of the best big men in the country, Jaleel Okafor, of course. But how about the senior season that Rocking Christmas has had for Jim Beheim's crew? quite enough you can hear the ice melt in somebody's bourbon glass in here while they're shooting free throws but then they pick it right back up knocked out of bounds and it'll belong to the Wolfpack and it wears on you this Louisville pressure wears on you and you know Rick Pitino told us before the game my guys don't get tired he said they don't get tired. You know, Rozier, Chris Jones, I mean, they are, ha have just are in excellent condition, and they have the ability to keep it up. Yeah, the youth oh. opportunity is missed. It ended up turning into a layup, but Barber goes into traffic again. He is fearless. And it's the Cardinals coming away with it. Here's Rozier quickly on the shot. Tapped back out, controlled by no one. Now finally NC State picks up, and here's Barber again. Lacey's calling for it. Barber, ooh, big spill in the traffic. That'll be a foul on Rozier. That's going to be three on Rozier. Lacey was open, but Barber couldn't see him. He was focused solely on trying to go to the rack. I, I do love NC State's approach to this pressure. I mean, they, they are not wilting. They are attacking, and they are trying to get quality opportunities on the back end of that pressure. you got to hand it to them. Now, they have a capable point guard in Cat Barber who has the ability with his quickness, as we just saw right there, to break down pressure almost by himself. But they're not shying away from it. They're trying to take this game. And they know there's a sense of urgency for NC State. They need this game. They want to be a factor. They want to be an NCAA tournament team. Mark Gottfried hasn't missed in his first three seasons with the Wolfpack. So right now, they're not even on the Joe Lenardi four in or four out list. They're in a distant part of his mirror. One out of two for Barber. Substitution for Louisville. Anton Gill will come in. What was interesting, Rick Pitino, his bench has not scored in three of the last four games. But he likes his bench. But he loves his starters, and his, particularly that core four of Blackshear, Harold, Jones, and Rozier. Well, you just said, matter of factly, if, if my guys aren't tired and there's that much of a differential in terms of talent, why would I take him out of the game? And his bench has come through when called upon. There's a sweet block by Anya. Louisville hangs on, and now Barber comes away with it. Lacey thought about the three, gets around Jones, but man, the torch slammed shut. Lacey again, now Barber, he'll set it up. Gets around Harrell, gonna go after the shot blocker. Sweet pass, and NC State has tied it up. And a 
away from the ball whistle. It's going to go against the pack. And I think that's going to be on Freeman. And that will be his fourth as we take a quick look here inside the play. Well, he talked about the game plan for NC State, and it's about attacking Louisville's pressure with aggression. And they have a point guard in Cat Barber who is capable of doing that, does a nice job of drawing Louisville shot blockers. And that's what you do. You play their aggression against themselves. And a little over help there on the weak side. And NC State is able to get a nice layup. Only five assists for the Wolfpack so far this afternoon. The first one for Barber. Harrell back and down. He's got good position and a nice soft touch for the first field goal for Trez Harrell today. Yeah, I think at times Louisville does not give him quality touches on the block, especially when they go through those stretches where they can't score like they did in the first half. So that is excellent execution. Harrell knocked that loose. Great persistence by Washington with the left hand, and we're tied. Jones looks like he's trying to draw contact, but no call. Blackshear on the drive. In traffic, no go. Tapped up by Harrell a couple of times. And NC State and Lacey comes away with it. Lacey looking for the open man, can't find him. He'll take it himself. And the <laughs> Wolfpack goes back up by three. Are you kidding me? I mean, top of the key, that's Trevor Lacey's money zone. Mr. Iso right there coming through. I mean, these are tough, tough shots that Trevor Lacey is making. I mean, he averages 17 points per game, and he's been the true consistent force for Mark Godfrey's squad. The transfer from Alabama, he sat out and has come in and just done a terrific job of giving them a presence on the offensive end of the floor that every night you know you can count on Trevor Lacey getting your buckets. Played at Alabama for a couple of seasons. Averaged just a little over nine points. Did not play last season due to the transfer rules. And has come on and averaged 16.6. Shot 46% from the field and 42% from three. Well, Trevor Lacey, I mean, the degree of difficulty. It seems like all the shots. I mean, there, there's a man close to him at all times. Nice little shot fake in that top of the key area time and time again, whether they're playing man or whether they're playing zone, they look to give him the basketball there because he has the entire floor to work with and he's capable. He's got deep range. He has shown some tremendous shot making skills in this game. And coming right back is Anton Yield, a sophomore, oddly enough, from Raleigh, North Carolina, hits that bucket. The turnover on you ran out of room. First turnover this half by the Wolfpack, and look how much time we played in this half. Got to go to Harold again, working on Washington, and he got hit. We're a ways away from the bonus for Louisville, but now that's 16 fouls. Kyle Washington hit with his first. Make that five team fouls on NC State. That's thrown too far, and it's a foot race, and be careful, Barber's fast. And Louisville gets away with one there. Chris Jones saved it. Jones gonna pull up, that's off the mark. Rebound on you. Alley. Ooh. And that's just poor transition defense there by Louisville, not matching up. And Martin's able to get behind, get behind the pressure. Harrell still fighting for position. With Washington, he calls for it, then backs off. Gill runs the offense, gets a good screen, goes left, and it's rejected by Anya. These are the top two shot blocking teams in the ACC, and we've seen a lot of them already today. Open, Caleb Martin, three ball, largest lead for the Wolfpack. They're up six.
Rozier set to come back into the game for Louisville along with Mafia. Harrell, quick spin move into traffic. He got hit. Shots aren't falling, but he continues to go after it, and he'll go to the line. Oh, it's been a great display here in the second half for NC State. Martin getting behind the zone right there, and how about the extra pass from your leading scorer, Trevor Lacey? Caleb Market Martin knocks it down. The freshman helping the Wolfpack. We figure we picked up a healthy audience from Lexington. These schools are not that far apart. You could go to the game in Louisville and drive to Lex for dinner if you wanted to. And when they played on the same day, they've all won on the same day. Kentucky convincingly today, but Louisville trails this game to NC State by six. It's the Wolfpack's largest lead in this game this afternoon. Been an excellently played game. The Wolfpack 9 of 14 shooting in this half. Two out of four from three, and they've only turned the ball over once in this half. Are you allowed to mention Kentucky on a little telecast? I wasn't well, sure you, that you can do that. You know, I flew in yesterday on a plane bound for Louisville with a guy wearing a Kentucky T-shirt, so I guess it's okay. Oh, God bless him. Yeah, I didn't say anything to him, nor did I walk out with him either. <laughs> But let's just say we know what the Lexington folks are rooting for. That's easy. And Harrell gets that to crawl down. So he's had more points from the foul line than he's had in buckets and no dunks to add to his all-time school record 192. A little bit of a block there though. Anya, boy, you just there's so many people trying to block your shot for both of these teams. And that's three on Harrell. This is a great job just getting into the lane, and if you do that, you can crash the offensive glass. You know, anytime you play a team that has guys that, that try to take shots out of the air, what you know that, it, what you know that you can do is you can crash the offensive glass because as they're trying to block the shot, if it's your assignment, as B.J. Anya did right there, you, you've got a free run at the offensive rebound. And so, you know, that NC State and their attack mindset against this Louisville pressure, as long as they continue to take care of the basketball, I think they can continue to get good looks on the back end. Darrell looking. He's a very good passer, very intelligent player. Vic Pitino is maybe the smartest player I've had in Louisville. Mafion, no good, way off the mark. Rebound to Kyle Washington. The Washington screen well guarded that time by Jones gets around Harold though and excellently cut off by Mapion but that left an open shooter another splash down by Ralston Turner with these three point shooting for NC State getting hot there's three out of five in this half and a lot of contact there and let's go against Barber much to his disbelief Oh, I don't know where NC State is in this game without the play of Anthony Barber and his ability to break down and find open shooters. Ralston Turner with the knockdown, and look at that NC State bench. I mean, you can tell this is a big game for them. They, they need this game. They need this win. And on the back of their sophomore point guard, he is he's pitching a shutout here today. I mean, he is playing exceptionally well, taking care of the basketball, scoring, and setting his guys up. He throw missed. So the lead remains at eight. A lot of little things are not going right for the Cardinals here. They're shooting poorly in this half, 33% overall. You see the field goal percentage is Barber in traffic. No good, and it's going to be a foul, and I think this is going to go on Louisville. And it's on Rozier, and if that's, the, if that's it, that's four on Terry Rozier. So what did we talk about in the last possession about shot blocking and then attacking, getting a free run? That's what happened right there. So shot blockers go up to try to get Barber's shot and BJ Anya. He has a free run at the offensive glass. And Terry Rozier is the one now that's charged with boxing him out. Well, that's just a mismatch. 
Yeah, he's holding him right here, and that's absolutely a foul. So Barber off the inbounds pass. And a breakdown Snyder, who's into the game now, as Rozier has to check out. Quentin Snyder, who played very well against Pitt in some crunch minutes. Gets around the screen. Lefty from Washington, no good. And Harrell higher than anybody in the building to get the rebound. Snyder, three ball. Well, that's Bray coming off the bench. He's an 18% three-point shooter. Timeout, NC State. Rozier gets in foul trouble, four fouls, and Rick Pitino calls on Quentin Snyder. Yeah, 18% from beyond the arc. It was 100% on that one. I mean, <laughs> the young fella just comes into the game and is ready to go. And I like this timeout by Mark Godfrey because the crowd is trying to get Louisville energy up, their energy up and going. And so I like the timeout because the crowd sometimes can manufacture some rushing in your game on the offensive end, particularly against a pressing defense like Louisville. So I like this timeout and just reiterate to your guys that you're in a good spot right now. If you're Mark Godfrey, you're up five with nine minutes to go. Continue to take care of the ball and don't let Louisville go on one of those runs like they did against Pitt to close the game. 22 to two to close out a game where Pitt had built up a six point lead. The Wolfpack's largest lead has been eight in this game. And right now NC State also enjoys a rebounding edge in this game, 32 to 26. But let me remind you that NC State has had a tough time in close games. They've had four losses by four or fewer points, second most to Georgia Tech in the ACC. You know, it was a rarity to see in this particular game Louisville out on the run because NC State has done a really good job. Again, not turning the basketball over, and their transition defense has been sound. But listen to this crowd. I mean, they are ready to erupt. Jones will be his first. Not in the bonus. I mean, I thought they were going to pay. I thought they were here to watch the game. Jang and Russ Smith I know who they're texting. There's no NBA games. They can't be score no. tracking. No. Tough shot. Oh, and it's stuck. Possession arrow favors Louisville. Yeah, fella, I don't know. And now someone's probably just texted them, hey, guys, watch the game. <laughs> Carol Lawson just called you out on worldwide television. Turner, you got to recognize this. You got numbers. I mean, you, you waste an opportunity there. You had four on three. And one of the four that was, one of the two that were on the other end was Harold, so you had no rim protector. Anya, go after it. This crowd. Holy I mean. smokes. Harold, let's see what he does now. Goes right back after it. Draws a little contact. Almost tapped in by Mathiang, but no such luck. And here come the Wolf Pack. Anoaku due to check in and a steal. White Jones has got such active hands. All the way. Yes. 
Barber to Anya, and he's fouled. Barber looked like he was caught in a maze and couldn't figure out where the door was, but he managed to get the pass off in time. All day we've been chronicling for the love of the dunk. DJ Anya, he's registering his nomination for dunk of the day. NC State, they are in this thing, and they want to pull this big time upset. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots and in part by Wendy's. Proud sponsor of the 2015 John R. Wooden Men's Player of the Year Award. All right, Chris, thank you very much. We've talked about how NC State has had four losses by four fewer points in conference play, but this has plagued them all season, even out of conference. It has. I mean, they have really struggled. Uh, had that Notre Dame game, had the basketball with 16 seconds left. Trevor Lacey turns it over. Trevor Lacey had a great look at a layup down the stretch, and that Virginia game was seven seconds left, and he missed it. So they certainly have had their opportunities in close games and just haven't quite been able to finish it. And they do it against the number nine team in the nation and pick up some very valuable brownie points as they try to fight their way back to get even in the conversation for bracketology. Jones on the drive. Lane opened up. He switched hands and he didn't go. Montrez Harold has taken just five shots in this game and he's made one. Open shot, Lacey. That's yes. why Trevor Lacey and Ralston Turner and Cat Barber have hit some big buckets. That's 12 for Lacey. Back to matching the Wolfpack's largest lead. Blackshear scoreless in this half after 14 in the first half. Hands it off to Jones, now to Snyder. Remember, Rozier's on the bench, four fouls. Harrell's got three. Snyder again. And a good rebound in traffic by the freshman Caleb Martin. It's open. I'll tell you what, that's an awesome drive using the contact on Onowaku, and it's going to be a timeout for Louisville as the Wolfpack has their largest lead. I mean, Trevor Lacey is... He's just, he's just playing with this Louisville defense. I mean, the last couple possessions, they're just giving him the basketball, hesitation, gets him to rise up, and then what a finish. I mean, that's a 6'10 player that he's finishing underneath of. I mean, what a luxury to have. You've got a player that you can give the basketball. We talked about, about this in the first half. Trevor Lacey leads the country in isolation points. So one-on-one, -on -one, creating something and finishing it. And... I think that's what Mark Godfrey is going to do here down the stretch. You put the ball in the hands of your best player, and you let him close out the game. There are T-shirts in India that read, if cricket is religion, then Sachin is God. The little master is the story of that religion of the man, Sachin Tendulkar, the 5'5 batsman who made his international debut at the age of 16 in 1989, is considered the greatest cricket player ever. This is the dramatic tale of one man's meeting with history and a team's meeting of greatness. ESPN films The Little Master, Sunday at 8 on ESPN. Carroll at that high post. Back to Blackshear, sets the screen. Rozier has returned. Missed. NC State has won the rebounding battle. Now let's see. If this is Rozier, he's done. Yep, that's it. He's fouled out of the game. A critical moment 
in the game for Louisville already down 10 they've lost their sophomore point guard Terry Rozier well you referenced it I mean the best part of the second half for NC State to me as we see the collision has been their defensive rebounding I mean, all five guys are going to the defensive glass and you know he's frustrated he's frustrated I mean you barely you're saddled with four fouls you're sitting on the bench your coach puts you back in because your team's down double digits and you're barely in a couple plays and now you've got to sit for the rest of the game you wonder if he was frustrated that, that shot he took didn't go in he was trying to force the action with the rebound front end of the one and one for Caleb Martin the younger of twin brothers by one minute Cody Martin who has not seen action today is his brother so now where does the offense come from for Louisville and then your, your two principals would be Montrez Harrell and Chris Jones here down the stretch but a double digit deficit in under five minutes you've got to find a way to score and score quickly so who do you turn to if you're Louisville if Snyder comes up firing and missing and another rebound for NC State Chris Jones, you start to feed Harrell again. Can you get Blackshear reignited after a scoreless second half? Martin. Over to Lacey. No hurry for the Wolfpack here at all. Martin coming in with a crash and finally the rebound to Mafion. Jones in traffic. He'll draw contact and he'll go to the line to shoot two. And that foul will be on Anya. That's two on him. And there's part of the story of the game. Terry Rozier fouling out. 4.56 left in the game in regulation. See Cat Barber come back in as Kayla Martin gave some effective minutes off the bench for Mark Gottfried. So Jones cuts it under 10. Now, undoubtedly, we'll see some of that Louisville pressure. Lost it out of bounds. It's going to belong to the Cardinals. Louisville basketball. You know, the strength for NC State has been that they have attacked Louisville's pressure. What they cannot do is all of a sudden become meek and mild in, in their press offense. They've got to look to continue to attack. Wait, another rebound for Anya. Lost it. Blocked the shot. And no, wait a minute. If we had a whistle, we couldn't hear it. So erase the bucket. We're going to get another foul on Anya. Three on Anya. So missed shot there and it just was talking about the defensive rebounding for NC State and Anya just allows Chris Jones to slip in there and steal it from him. Louisville is just the one offensive rebound in this half. They had eight in the first half. They're really getting hammered on the boards by ten. Well, this is a lifetime. Four minutes left. Oh, and sure. And if you've been following NC State all season long, you know that. I mean, the end of the games, it has been... Tremendous theater. Couldn't hang on to it. NC State loses it out of bounds. Now they're paying attention. Oh, you want to know what's at stake in this one? A big time ACC tilt. Well, these coaches and their expressions, they're going to let us know. Gottfried and Patino, they know this is a big one. Chris Cotter back in Bristol over on ESPN2, West Virginia at Iowa State. Monte Morris here finding Abdul Nader for the love of the dunk. 
It's a 13 point Iowa State lead right now at Hilton. Might be Valentine's Day, but Syracuse fans are also hoping it's Christmas time. Tonight at the Carrier Dome, Duke, Syracuse, just under 15 minutes before tip. We'll send it out there as soon as we come to the conclusion of our game at the KFC Yum Center. Dave? Chris, I have no doubt you were great. We just can't hear you right now because it's so loud in here with the band and the artificial noise and the crowd noise here. Now they get quiet and Snyder just has a rim out. Both the angle of the rebound, put back, no good. Just the second offensive rebound for the Cardinals in this half and they cannot convert. More time off the clock for the Wolfpack. But you notice, Carol, we were talking during the break. You think the Wolfpack playing a little uptight right now on offense? Uh, the last couple possessions. I, I mean, you, you got to put the ball in the hands of Lacey and of Barber and let them create right here. Give you a quality look. That's a quality look for Austin Turner. You got to be happy with that. Under three minutes. Jones. Harrell. Tapped it back to himself. And we're going to have a whistle that we can't hear. We have to wait till everybody stops to know that there's a foul. It'll be on Trevor Lacey. You know, this has been the one area that Louisville has been able to get to. That's the free throw line here in the second half. They got into the bonus quite early, but the most impressive thing to me about NC State's defensive performance has to be their defensive rebounding. And you said it right there, in the last possession, NC State got their second offensive rebound of the half. That is the third. I and mean, they have really limited Montrez Harrell from getting going. Just one field goal on the game for Montrez Harrell. He's only taken five shots. He does have ten rebounds. And he's four of six from the line. And he's four of seven from the line. Louisville ten of twelve in this half. You know, make here is critical, not just because it gives you a point and it cuts the deficit, but it allows you to set up your pressure, set up your full court pressure on the make. And that's exactly what's going to happen. And there's going to be a foul here on Jones or Snyder. We'll see. It'll be on Jones, and that's just two on Chris Jones. We got a big one for you Monday night. Presented by Verizon at 7 o'clock, Michael Young leads the Pitt Panthers. Big winners today against Malcolm Brogdon and the Cavaliers, who also pulled one out by a point, and the Jayhawks battled the Mountaineers. Pitt, number two, Virginia at seven, and number eight, Kansas, number 21, West Virginia at nine. But the friend of the one and one is good. Monday on ESPN, part of Rivalry Week, presented by Wendy's. Well, big win for Pitt today against North Carolina, and how classy was it of the Oakland Zoo to have that sign of the Dean Smith saying you should never be proud of doing what's right. You should just just do what's right in the moment of silence for Roy Williams in North Carolina. That was classy by that student section. Jones hop step in a lot of traffic floater is knocked out of bounds and it belonged to NC State. So Louisville was down 11 with 4.56 to go. That's when Rozier fouled out. So that's they've only advanced at three points in over two, uh, two and a half minutes. Barber, nice pass. On your rejected. And stolen back by Barber. He anticipated and it was kind of a bad pass too. Louisville just has one timeout as we come up to the final two minutes of this game. Mark Gottfried has three. And again, he got... Oh, my. That was a rainbow from Lacey, who was up against the seven-footer. Snyder breaking away. He's down to six. State. Lacey was somehow, through all the hands that were in his face, able to see Mark Gottfried signal for a timeout. All right, so how much, Kara, if NC State is able to hang on here, would getting this win in this building against number nine Louisville help them? Well, I think it would be their best win of the season because it's a road win against a top 10 team. I mean, certainly they're win against Duke at home 
by double digits was very impressive. But look at that, two and seven versus the RPI top 50. And I think you want to get in the NCAA tournament, it's all about who you're beating. I mean, I, I don't really care that they played the fourth best strength of schedule in the country. Yeah. If you don't win those games, then it doesn't matter. So this would solidify to me a win against home against Duke and a win on the road against Louisville. I'm not saying it solidifies them in the tournament, right. but what it does is it says, hey, you know, we're a really good team and we can beat the upper crust of the country. A minute and 34 remaining. You know, you play in the ACC, you're going to get these type of opportunities. I mean, they have a road game against North Carolina as well. So this is criti critical for the Wolfpack. The Wolfpack are off for a week until they're home in Raleigh as Jones is hit with a foul. And they'll host Virginia Tech on Saturday. They've had a strange run and went to play constantly. Then they played one game in the last 11 days. That was the Virginia game. Now here, and now they've got another seven days off. That'll be three on Jones. And now Cat Barber, the 69% free throw shooter. And Harrell snatching the rebound. This is Blackshear. Tough little floater. And it was the and still with it. Lacey trapped right in front of us. Great pass. Another good feed. On you go. Oh, a hammer. Harrell in trouble. Gets rid of it. Was he out? No. He, oh, sorry, was he out? Yes. He could not stay in bounds. And Louisville forced the foul. Now, if Louisville cannot make a comeback here, how does this affect them? I mean, at this point, if you're Louisville, I mean, you, you know you're in the NCAA tournament. It's all about trending in the right direction come March, peaking at the right time. Obviously, this could take them out, you know, of the top four with the loss right there. But we know those five teams at the top of the ACC. They're going to be in the NCAA tournament. They're going to have very good seeds in the NCAA tournament. They're going to be heading to the Q's on a Wednesday night game on ESPN. Then they'll host the Miami Hurricanes on the 21st, their next two games. The Miami team, they barely beat in South Florida, 60 to 57. The 63-55. Jones, forced three ball. And a few folks are grabbing their coats and heading out. This is a shape shifter in bracketology. To Golinardi is furiously taking notes. And if Mark Gottfried, this is, I'm sure he's thinking to himself, I'm not sure, but I'm going to guess that he's thinking, finally, finally, we can hang on against a good team and get a win, especially on the road. Yes, they whipped Duke. A while back, that was their biggest win so far. But they come into here in this great building, and they come up with a, a great second half. Of it. Well, that young man right there, Anthony Barber, has had a, a bunch to do with this. I mean, his performance—18 points, great defense. And how about this? This is unbelievable. On the day we've been celebrating the dunk. The man with 192 career dunks, Montrez Harrell, today has just one field goal, five attempts, and no dunks. Now, we're not hanging this loss strictly on him. That would be unfair and inaccurate. He does have 11 rebounds and a couple of assists, but the two points certainly is a, is a glaring surprise in the scoring column. Terry Rogio fouls out of the basketball game, and he's limited to seven points, so let's give credit where credit's due. It's not always that a guy plays bad it's that NC State forced forced them into playing subpar on the offensive end of the floor I mean that's credit what NC State came in here and did on the defensive end they hold Louisville to 61 points they were terrific on the defensive glass I mean, it's just a very very good performance 
Louisville will take their final timeout on the Blackshear three with 20.9 to go. His first points of the half. He has 17. Six, make it 19 now after that. His first three of this half. He came out firing early, and good news for Louisville that whatever the hip problem was that kept him out of all but one minute of the pit game is clearly fine. Well, we have been celebrating the dunk all day long. It's certainly one of the most explosive and remarkable, exciting athletic plays, and it goes all the way back, we believe, to 1944 when Bob Curland and Oklahoma A&M, now Oklahoma State, threw it down December 16th of 44. Curland was a heck of a player and deserving Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame inductee, a two-time Olympic gold medalist as well. And so we go back to the 40s. Will Chamberlain dunked on a 12-foot hoop at Kansas. Not surprising. And then the dark period when you couldn't dunk because of then Lou Alcindor, then Julia Serving wins the ABA contest, and Larry Nance won the first NBA contest. And you, you have a favorite for tonight's NBA dunk contest, don't you? Yeah, Zach Levine for the Minnesota Timberwolves, rookie out of UCLA. I think he's got something special in store, and he is electric. I mean, his athleticism is fantastic. I was a little disappointed. There wasn't a bullet point for my Nerf hoop dunking exploits. What happened have there any, with graphics? Is there video? What's going on? No video? No, no video. Well, then you got to have video to back up. We just can't right. slap, you know. Come you got to have man. photographic proof in this era. I was killing it. I'm sure you were. I'm sure you were. How are you doing with it now? I, I broke it. I ripped <laughs> it out of the wall. Are you kidding me? There's power over here? <laughs> it's no longer up. Those things last a long time, though. They have to. 19 for Cat Barber. And NC State will head back to Raleigh, get ready for Virginia Tech, and an opportunity to get to 500 in conference play if they can take care of the Hokies. But they'll celebrate this one. Jones will go to the line. Young team, a young team that Mark Gottfried has, and, you know, his front line. They, they really came to play today. They came to play. B.J. Anya, good minutes off the bench. He's kind of been up and down lately. Was talking with Mark Godfrey before the game. He was saying, you know, we really need him to play. We need him to step up and play well. And he did that tonight. He's got that seven foot nine inch wingspan, and he utilized that on the offensive end of the floor with his dunks and rebounding. When you look at the rebounding difference in this game, 45-37. B.J. Anya comes off the bench, gets eight points and ten rebounds for NC State, and he had the throwdown dunk that pretty much let everybody know who was going to win this game. It was going to be the Wolfpack. And a foul here by Snyder. That'll be on Snyder. He's picked up four. But NC State will end up shooting 48% in this half and 44 for the game. Louisville, 30% in the, in the half and 33 for the entire game, 20 for 60. They did shoot respectably well from three, 44%, but still, the two-pointer's not dropping, and I think you were dead on to credit the Wolfpack for a tremendous defensive effort today. So NC State picks up one they had to have. If they're serious about the NCAA tournament, they needed to knock off another top 10 team. They took care of Duke. Now they've beaten the number nine team in the country. Our final score here is NC State 74 and Louisville 65. For Kara Lawson, happy birthday again, Kara. I'm Dave Lamont, thanking our great crew here in Louisville. Coming up next, Duke and Syracuse. So we say good night from Louisville and send it off to Dan Shulman and the Illustrator. Gentlemen.